Yo, 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 welcome back to Dolphins United, the platform for Dolphins. You heard me. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Had a good last two days, man. Got a little bit of mini camp in. You know, got to read the, the Twitter feed. You know, it's like Christmas for us. You know, we wake up in the morning, we get the Flores interview. Get that out the way by 11.45. You already know them live tweets start rolling in. So let's talk about it. First day, all right? Boy, had me a little nervous now. Had me a little nervous. I don't know about y'all, but it was a that so, mo that so Dolphins moment because in my previous video, if you watched it, and shouts out to the few that did, um, we, we, I already know it's dead season, so... 100 views, I'm not, I'm not flustered by none of that stuff. But anyway, this one probably ain't going to have a lot of views either. But I appreciate all of y'all faithfuls out there watching the videos. Continue, like, comment, subscribe, share. That's a good one. Share. All right. Uh, please share my content. The more that we share it to, the more of a fan base we could build or a community, I should say, not a fan base, a community we could build and then, you know, we could all interact with each other, make this channel the best it could be. Can't be the best without y'all. Dolph fans united, all right? So, um, let's go ahead and talk about it. Tua stunk it up. Plain and simple. Now, I don't know what happened on each interception. All right? I don't know if wide receiver ran the wrong route. And I don't know if, you know, he underthrew, overthrew, miscommunication, tip pass, whatever it was. It's on Tua's head, five interceptions. Now, I know you can't count every interception the same, you know, because of tip passes and things like that. And I know one of them was a tip by Gusecki. I get that. Um, five interceptions. All right, at the end of the day, the man threw five interceptions. It's practice, though. Okay? So, he did stink it up. There's no doubt about it. He stunk it up. He did do a little better at the end of practice. But the man stunk it up. He had five interceptions, plain and simple. There's no way around five interceptions. But the caveat is, we talking about practice. Practice? We are we talking about we talk yeah we talking about practice, Allen Iverson. Practice, okay? That's where you're supposed to have interceptions at. Now, are we going to be really worried about two or throwing five interceptions in a game? Let's really be honest about this, okay? Worst game two had last year. Uh, interceptions wise was against Buffalo. He threw three of them bad boys. Two of them, no, sorry, not two of them. One of them wasn't his fault. One of them, Parker fell down. That's the pick six. All right, that's the one that went back for a touchdown. The other two, yeah, them was his fault. Them, 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 them was his fault. But that one against Parker, that was not his fault, okay? Two is not, two or through five interceptions throughout the whole nine games he played. Two had a lot of games where he didn't throw any picks. Two is not going to throw picks, all right? He had two at the time when he came into the Buffalo game. That was the last game of the season. Two, what, like 10 touchdowns or something like that, nine touchdowns, whatever it was. The man's not going to throw five interceptions in the game, basically what I'm trying to get at. I'm not worried about that, especially after he said, we were trying to be really aggressive, squeeze balls into tight windows. That explains it. That lets me know everything I need to know. I'm not worried about you throwing five picks. What I am worried about is you throwing five picks again. Now, if you have two game, um, two practices back-to-back -back where you throw five picks, okay, now we're starting to build a bad habit, a bad pattern, and now we need to take a look into things. Now, how do you respond on your next practice? That's what I'm more worried about. That's what I was more worried about yesterday leading into today after I read that he threw five interceptions. Also, it was a monsoon outside. I live in Central Florida, so I know what South Florida was dealing with because it was raining like crazy here too yesterday and today for that matter. So, yes, that could have had an effect. We already know too. It doesn't have the strongest arm, probably doesn't have the best grip because he doesn't have the strongest arm, okay? And I know grip has something to do with arm strength as well, a little bit. Um, certain guys are different types of throwers. You have arm throwers, you have shoulder throwers, you have leg throwers, you have full body throwers. I get that. And so velocity can come from many different places on the body, but hand strength is part of it. Probably doesn't have the strongest grip. So balls coming out a little different than they would when his hands are dry. Most quarterbacks... You know, it'll affect them slightly. Uh, some quarterbacks have perfected 
throwing a wet ball. Peyton Manning did it. Tom Brady. Pat Mahomes just doesn't have any problems with any elements, period. He just he's just a freak of nature when it comes to throwing the football. All right, um, Tua's not Pat Mahomes. That probably affected his accuracy. Uh, we know he's a technician when it comes to certain things. Um, ball placement is his niche. So that could have affected him slightly, the rain. But it's not an excuse because we're in South Florida. We got to play in the rain. Especially at the beginning of the season, you could bet your bottom dollar some of them games going to be in the rain. All right, and it don't matter if it's a home or away game. Some of them games going to be in the rain. We're going to have to deal with some rain. And if Tua can't deal with the rain from now, then we're going to have problems on um, during those games because you got to deal with the elements. We got to play in the elements. I love that Coach Flores left them out there. Parker, you know, showed up yesterday. He did his thing. Uh, apparently, Albert Wilson is doing his thing. He's looking fast. Waddle had some catches with Tua yesterday. Um, everything was looking good. I thought they would put on pads like they did in the past, but I guess not. Um, they didn't even have three days of practice. They're not even practicing tomorrow. They'll probably just do some, I don't know what they're doing tomorrow, honestly. I don't know if they, after the day, they don't even have to come back to the facility. I'm not sure. They're just not practicing tomorrow. I know that for sure. So they got two days of light work in. No real contact, so we don't really know how the offensive line is doing. We don't really know how the defensive line is doing. They said something about, oh, there were guys getting pressure. That's all subjective. One, because the man, Tua, Tua has great pocket presence. So you can call it a would-be sack if you want, but Tua can step up in the pocket. He can roll. He can do these things, and he's a little more athletic than he was last year. So we don't really know what to call an actual sack. So I wouldn't say the pass go on for that. And even then, we can't get a full gauge on what a sack is because you can't touch the quarterback and you don't know what tackle he's going to be able to slip out of like he did last year. So, uh, when it comes to that, we, we didn't really get a good idea. Running, can't really get a good idea because there's no full contact going on. So, all we could really see was the pass game uh, because that's the only thing that really doesn't really have too much contact. And even if you're at the line of scrimmage, you can really bump and run without pads. And not and there not be too much of an issue. It's not to the full physicality that you should um, that you would be able to do with pads, but to some effect you can still be effective um, press coverage wise without pads on. It, it works. Okay, we we all play football outside. You can press cover without pads. It's, it's not a problem. Now run blocking without pads, it's a little tougher. Okay, so we got to really see the pass game. Defense won the first day. Move on to the next day. Today, by the way, that's what it was. Uh, for those watching it on Wednesday when I dropped the video. Now, if you're watching it on Thursday, it was yesterday for you. So, um, there was, a, there was a, a 180 switch, okay? Tua came out aggressive. He was throwing deep passes. And I heard Omar say something about, oh, they were in red zone. Yeah, that was in the bubble, okay? While they were outside, Tua was balling out. Okay, Tua came out, had no interceptions. Don't know how many touchdowns he had, but I counted at least four touchdowns. Okay, at least four touchdowns thrown. That's red zone and deep passes combined. He hit Grant on one. He hit uh, Parker on one. He hit Fuller for a nice dig. He hit uh, Waddle on a touchdown deep as well. The man was just finding guys. He hit Gaskins on a wheel route. Uh, they said he was out of bounds, but still good placement on the ball over Phillips. The man balled out. Red zone, that's going to need some work. Now, Tua, most of his touchdowns were in the red zone last year uh, because he didn't have anything deep because he wouldn't throw deep for the most part. Uh, so most of his touchdowns and, and some of his touchdowns were just well-designed plays by Chan Gailey, by the way, to get guys wide open. Uh, he threw some touchdowns to Shaheen. Uh, he also threw some touchdowns to Gasecki, and then he threw some touchdowns to Parker in the red zone. So I'm not worried too much about the red zone uh, when it comes to pass certain pass plays, but there were some times in the red zone as well that Tua last year was holding on to the ball too long, and this year, uh, in, in at, at least so far in practice, for this today's practice, he held the ball too long on certain plays, didn't throw guys open, and was trying to wait for guys to get open, and you, we all know, when you get into the red zone, especially when you get inside the five-yard line, 
things are condensed. You've got to be able to take chances, um, calculated chances, of course. You can't put the ball in harm's way like he did against the Patriots last year, throwing late to the outside. You can't do stuff like that, especially when you don't have the strongest arm in, in the world. You can't throw late over the middle. You can't throw late across your body. You can't throw late um, going outside as well inside the five-yard line. It just it doesn't work, okay? So the same way he did that is the same way he was struggling today, holding on to the football too long. He's got to clean those things up. I'm pretty sure he will. Two is not going to be perfect, okay? We, we know that he's still learning, so he's going to make mistakes. How does he adjust? How does he learn from those mistakes? That's what I'm so much um, – that's what I'm more so worried about rather than, you know, what he's actually doing. I want to know – did he make um if he made a mistake, how did he respond the next practice? And I, if we had another practice, another practice tomorrow, I would have liked to see instead of completing one for three for uh, um, a red zone period, three for three, two for three on some other ones. OK, that's what I would want to see. And I, I'm pretty sure he would improve because the way he improved today from yesterday possibly would have been an improvement on the red zone um, the next day they practice. So we'll see what happens. We got to wait a whole month and some days before we see training camp. And even when they start training camp, it won't be the way it needs to be for about a week until I'm into training camp, okay, where they really get to put pads on and they really get to go ham at each other. And we start to really see what this team is going to be made up of, especially on defense. Defensively, Noah Ibnogany stepping his game up right now. Um, they say Phillips looks fluid, which I really like to hear at the linebacker position. There's some other guys that are stepping up that we don't really know too much about. Hunter Long is really looking good out there as well. I like what I'm hearing about him. I can't wait to see what the offensive lineman is going to be, though. The, I mean, the offensive line is going to be because that's what I'm really worried about. If our offensive line is good and we can create pressure, we should have no problem getting to 10 games. And I don't care what Tua does. We, we should have no problem. Tua is going to take care of the football. We know that. If Tua just plays the way he played last year, we win 10 games again if offensive line is doing what they need to do for run blocking and pass blocking and the defense can create pressure, which leads to turnovers. We're good. All right, now if Tua can be a little bit better, an upper echelon quarterback, then we can get to 11 and 12. All right, now we get to 12, we're in the playoffs, plain and simple. I don't. At this point, nothing else matters. If we get to 12 and 5, we're in the playoffs. If we get to 13 and 4, oh, we're looking really good. All right, so that's looking far ahead but that's my mindset i want to see what the trenches are on both sides of the football we are not going to get to know that answer we're not going to get an answer about that until about a week into training camp guys so it is what it is there uh that's when we'll get our one-on-ones on pass blocking and we'll see who beat who or if it was a stalemate and things like that and then we'll get to see the sevens on sevens elevens on elevens and then of course my favorite is goal line defense goal line offense running that football to see if we're able to get that one yard or if we're able to stop that one yard on defense. Well, that's it for this video. All right. I just rambled on, gave y'all everything that I was feeling about these last two days. I wish we could get more time, but it is what it is. That's what they gave us. We, we take that. We, we hold on to it. We hold on to these little videos that we're seeing on Twitter. Please go on Twitter. If you're not following the Dolphins on Twitter, are you really a Dolphin fan? Like, think about that. They're putting out stuff every day, all right? They do a great job over there. Please go follow our team on Instagram and on Twitter if you're not doing that. I mean, that it sounds, really, it does sound like, okay, you're stating the obvious right here. But some people probably aren't really thinking about following the Dolphins on social, uh, the social media rather than um, outside of YouTube. You know, so for those people, that small percentage, please do yourself a favor. Go check that stuff out because there is a lot of stuff on there that they're not putting on YouTube, especially videos like Tua through um, today to Gaseki. Like, I'm mean, not to Gaseki, to Jakeem. That deep ball that we heard about, that we uh, saw in tweet form, we got to see visually. That type of stuff is good to see because you get a little more context. So please go check that stuff out. Of course, rock with your boy. You know, got merch coming soon. We doing big things on this channel. All right, we're trying to get some things geared up with a website, so on and so forth. I'll keep you guys updated with that. Soon we're going to do a, a Q&A se session 
uh, a, like a live stream Q&A session where you guys will ask me questions and I'll ask you guys questions and we'll interact in that manner as well. That'll come either later this week or sometime next week. But until next time, I'll holla at y'all. Y'all already know what it is. Fins up, baby. Till we die. See y'all later.